Before we get started with this online class, I want to show you a few options that you can use a chair uh, for modifications. So in this example here, a forward fold, a standing forward fold, you can use the chair for your head. You can use your hands on the chair seat instead. Um, and then with your hands on the edges of the seat, you can step back and take this into plank pose. So anywhere throughout the video where we take downward facing dog or plank or chaturanga or any of these postures, feel free to utilize this chair. So here I'm doing upward facing dog. And then I'm going to go back to downward facing dog. So again, you're just gripping under that chair seat with your fingers. And if this is hard for you to take downward facing dog with your hands on the floor, this would be Again, pull the chair in, a great modification. I'm going to move into one of our standing postures that we do in this class, um, high lunge. It's nice to have that chair for balance. It is a challenging balance pose. And then we do at this in this class at some point do a twist. Um, so here's another modification using the chair seat for a twist. Okay. And then low lunge when you lower down to the floor. If reaching your arms above head puts pain in your back, you can use your hands on the chair seat there. All right. And here's another example of downward facing dog. So again, just come back to this anytime you need to see um, how to use this chair for some modifications. Warrior two, just even using the chair to step your foot forward from downward facing dog is sometimes a challenge. So that helps you um, lift up a little higher with the chair seat. All right. And back to downward facing dog. So you can see these transitions are gonna happen throughout the class. At any point in time, again, bring this chair into play here back into a forward fold. This is, um, we do elbow dog at one point, dolphin pose. So this is a great uh, use of the chair to take the floor up a little higher and then into even a forearm plank. This is a really good exercise. Um, we do a headstand core little segment there. So that's a good exercise instead of the headstand core to get the chair and put your elbows under it. So now using the chair for some of the standing postures, I'm gonna show you low lunge here again especially if your knee hurts with it being on the floor. You can use the chair under your thigh. And then using the chair seat back for that twist. So I'll show you again here, low lunge. And then when you twist, grab the back of the chair seat. And you can use your hands on the back of the chair seat. You could straighten out your leg in the twist here. These are all just little fine tuning movements you can take to enhance the experience. Warrior two, and in this chair set up with warrior two, you'll have to take your right foot a little forward to uh, make sure it's under your knee and your, maybe your left foot back. And then right here, I'm moving into side angle. I'm grabbing the back chair leg to stretch the left arm over. You can also grab inside your leg for the front chair leg and take your other hand to the chair back, the chair seat back, or again, stretch your arm overhead. Gives you a lot of support here for that challenging posture. Next we're going to move on to some of the standing balancing poses that we practice in this online class. Your chair is really helpful just, just for simple balance. Right? Um, later on I'll show you you can actually sit in the chair for some of these standing balancing poses. Um, I'd like to have the chair back facing me as you just saw. Um, so your hands can come to the chair seat back for easy balance in Eagle Pose Garudasan. This helps you get your legs wrapped up. You're welcome to take your elbows into it and not use the chair too, but at least it's there. I don't do this in the class, but this is also an extra little modification, taking a forward fold with chair uh, or with eagle in eagle pose with a chair. Okay. We also do this number four squat in this class, so using the chair for balance. Okay. And then in the transition back into high lunge, using the chair seat for balance. It just makes the experience a little bit more pleasant so you're not wobbling around and fumbling for balance. All right. And here using this for high lunge, giving my knee something to push into, one arm up at a time is maybe can alleviate some of that low back pressure from reaching your arms up. It's helpful. The chair is, gosh, it's so versatile. So even if there's something not on here that you're um, playing with at home, do it, it'll work, right? Um, so I'm gonna work into pigeon pose here. We take pigeon in this class as well. So putting your knee up in the chair and you can drop your left, your back knee down towards the floor. You can straighten your back knee out. It kind of pulls a little bit more along the front of that left hip using the chair back, seat back for a stretch. I'm flipping my toes here to get a maximum stretch along the front of that leg. 
and then here you can take the hands to the hips but taking the, the your knee your foot up on that chair seat um, just takes the pressure out of your hip and your knee so that's nice little helpful transition so here we do three leg dog and at one point we also are going to do wild thing in the practice it's just nice to do this up higher hand on the chair seat again this is just taking the floor up higher for you so it's you can still do the work this is the arm balance that will work into yeah look at that it's fun <laughs> and then back into your downward facing dog all right next we'll move on to headstand so with your chair right where it is, you're just going to turn around and come down to the floor. And again, this is going to be in the middle of the practice, um, so you might just pull the chair in at this point. And work, set up that headstand positioning with your feet coming up on the chair seat. My toes are just right there on the edge. You can definitely move this chair in under you closer, or you would just move closer to the chair. But in this class, I do some core work that you might be rolling your eyes at and going, there's no way I can do this. So this is a wonderful modification, toe taps three on each side, five on each side, how many ever you want to do. And you can even bend your knee here. So you can take your knee into your chest and start to push your leg up to the ceiling. This takes your balance a little bit more overhead. So if that's too, you know, too wobbly, then just keep your knee bent. So here, knee bent, knee to the ceiling, feel it out, then straighten your leg up to the ceiling. And then you can bend your knee again. And this is great core work. And then back to the chair seat. Using this chair for headstand is so helpful, but again, like I said earlier, you can put your elbows on that chair seat and take that forearm plank, knee to chest there, all right? Next, we're gonna move on to some of these seated forward folds that we do in the practice. Um, oh, actually, first I wanna show you this. These are the, this was the seated variation for those balancing poses that I wanted to show you. So you could sit in the chair and take that number four shape. Um, you also can sit in the chair and take eagle, which comes up in a little bit. So here we're taking the half bound lotus forward fold. And this is a challenging posture seated. It's also kind of challenging on the chair. You might want to put something like an extra yoga mat on your chair seat if you have slippery pants so you're not slipping around on that chair seat. Make sure that your straight leg is just far enough out. You can actually keep that knee softly bent. It does not need to be straight. You could use blocks under your hands here. You could cross your ankle over the thigh instead of taking your heel up into your hip crease for this. So here's where I was like, oh yeah, by the way, you could use eagle here seated. Mm-hmm, forgot about this earlier. In Garudasan, a lot of this is ankle mobility. So with the chair, this is a great way to play with getting those ankles up under the chair seat more. So see how I'm just inching those ankles closer and closer and closer. I want them up under that chair seat as much as I can get them. This feels better to me. I get more out of this than I do standing in the balancing pose. Obviously the balancing pose is working balance, but whew, that works your thighs and your ankles so much. Awesome. So now another forward fold, Pachimottanasana, straight leg seated forward fold. Sitting on a chair seat gets those sit bones out from under you and gives you the anterior tilt of your pelvis that you're looking for. So that's a wonderful modification for a straight leg seated forward fold. Next we'll move into the seated twist that we're going to do towards the end of the class using this chair right up against you, crossing your leg over. This is Ardha Matsyandrasan um, with a straight leg, the bottom straight leg. And so you can use, it, use the chair here to pull your ribs into and use the chair legs to pull yourself into a twist so that you're not fold, folding to the side or leaning over your leg instead of remaining upright. Okay, so that's a really good modification for that. And then moving into a seated forward fold, another variation here, using the chair seat for your head. So another way to do that forward fold rather than sitting on the chair. This is one of my favorite ways to take a standing forward fold using the chair at an angle. Make sure that the chair seat is folded um, so that the bottom of the chair seat is up to the ceiling and then you put that um, upper spine of the chair seat back into your hip creases and you just let your hands rest. Great, great modification here. Alrighty, and then just one more thing I want to show you at the end of the class for Shavasana. You can use the chair to prop your calves up on the chair seat. Put a blanket under your calves or a blanket under your hips if you feel like you need more space. Alrighty, let's get started. Alright, we'll start this class standing. Finding balance in your feet. Wiggle out anything that needs wiggled out. Big breath to reach up. Inhale. And then you'll stretch over to one side. Use your hands to grab the wrist and pull it over. Release that and stretch to the other side. Exhale as you stretch. And inhale, stretch back up. Nice big opening. Forward fold. With an exhale, 
Use knees bent if you need. Use blocks. Use that chair if you need. A little movement just to feel where your hips are in space. Half lift helps to do that. And fold back in. Just enjoying the forward fold for a moment. Squatting down. We're going to take hands to the thighs for a standing cat cow. So as you exhale, push down into your thighs and round your spine. Look under. Inhale, open your chest and pull your chest through your shoulders. Exhale, push down, round out. Inhale, pull your elbows back a little bit and pull your chest forward a little bit as you open. Look up and exhale, round and slide back down. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Big inhale, lengthen out halfway and then step back. Coming into downward facing dog. Lengthen out through your spine, lengthen out through your arms. And take any movements here that make sense. Again, you can use that chair, hands on the chair seat if you need that modification. And then inhale into plank pose. Take your shoulders through, or your chest through your shoulders rather. Good, bend the knees and roll back into down dog. Just waving out some stuff here, moving around. Make sure those hands are spread out, fingers spread out evenly. Again, rounding through into plank. You can bend those knees to round through. Really press that chest through. Make sure your upper back's not rounding. And then again, bending those knees, waving back. Helps to warm the core up and the wrists. Smooth out your breath. Okay, step forward with your right foot. Lunge here on your fingers. Look up, open up. Straighten out your right leg just for an easy little forward fold. I like to lift my toes up on the front foot to add in that extra oomph, but if that's too much, don't do it. Also, try to lengthen your spine instead of just collapsing and rounding over your leg. All right, rebend your right knee. Inhale here. One more nice big breath. Plant your palms and start to then step back into downward facing dog. Exhale. And knees to floor. Elbows down, brief moment here in child's pose. Work out your wrists if they need any stretching or relaxing. Move your head around. And at any point in time, pause the video if you need to take extra time. If this is going too fast for you, just give it a pause. Right, inhale, kneeling, upward hand pose, and we'll revisit those side stretches. Pulling over to one side and then to the other side. You don't have to pull your wrist, you can just simply stretch your arms. Good, one more big inhale and then exhale. Float back down to child's pose. Wave up into tabletop. Tuck your toes up and back, downward facing dog as you exhale. And then we're going to take that left foot forward for the runner's lunge. You can have your hands on blocks here or at home if you don't have blocks, use a couple books or something. Um, just a moment to stretch your chest out and then again that forward fold, little pyramid stretch. Try to lengthen your chest out. So I like to do like a little waving motion just to kind of round and then straighten. So if you do the opposite of what you think it should look like or feel like, you can then feel that length. So bend back into the lunge, stretch your chest forward just for a moment here before you plant your palms and then step right back, downward facing dog. Use that exhale to release any tension and then melt down into kneeling for Anahatas in the heart pose. So I have my chin on the floor here if that is too intense, forehead to the floor or even bend your elbows and pillow your forehead with your forearms but make sure your knees and your hips aren't way out of line so your hips are over the backs of your knees. Good and then just waving down to the floor for sphinx pose, back bending here, pull your chest through your shoulders Point your toes back and lift your chin up to the ceiling. So you're not throwing your head back, you're actually engaging your back muscles to lift your head. Let's add on to Cobra. Hands come back next to your ribs and then press up through table. A little moment in child's pose. I like to tuck my toes there just to stretch out the feet and then pressing into downward facing dog. Walk up to your forward fold, Uttanasana. I'm going to take my hands behind back here for Yoga Mudrasana. It feels good to stretch out those wrists. Good. And again, you can use that chair here if you want to just enjoy an easy moment with that chair supported forward fold. Back up to standing, Ward Vahastasana. Inhale, Samastitihi. 
Exhale, standing pose. Okay, inhale, reach back up, Ordva. Exhale as you fold, Uttanasana. And complete the exhale as you complete the movement. Take an inhale to step back. Plank pose. Chaturanga, belly button rock and, and chest lowers. Inhale, then chest lifts, up dog or cobra. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. I'm just working out any kinks. I was cramping up in those triceps there, so I just had to work that, work that out. Step forward with your right foot, high lunge. And this is where that hair, the chair would come in handy if your balance is wonky. Reach your arms up. That back leg is so strong. You're lifting that back up, that back heel up as high as you can get it. Your gaze can go up. That does challenge balance more. So if that's too much, look forward. Good. Hands down to the floor. And then I'm going to roll back over into left leg squat. Right leg straight. Right toes up to the ceiling. Use your hands on the floor here for balance. This would be another place you could use that chair if it's on the edge of your mat. You could just use your hands on the chair seat. Okay, crawl back to the front of your mat now. Set your back knee down for low lunge. Mudras in here. One more time to stretch out those wrists. Open your heart. Work out any kinks. <laughs> Side bending is one of my favorite things to do here. Use a block or that chair here. Especially if that floor feels too far away. And then take your hands down to the floor. Half split. So when I take those when I take my hips back I've got to scooch my right foot forward so pull your right hip back as you scooch your right hip forward and then stretch your chest out towards your right toes you're kneeling on your left knee here and again if you need padding pad your left knee up I don't know if I said that before but you should know that <laughs> hopefully good step back into tabletop pose hands and knees and here I like to do fingertips cat cow um, I don't know it just it helps me with my grip and the wrist strength, I like to do the fingertip cat cow. If this is too much, put your hands flat. But just a few moments, inhaling and exhaling. And then come back to a seated virasana or vajrasana, either on your heels or between your heels. Just a moment to ground. Kneeling upward hand, side bend. So here's an example of not using your hands, your wrists, you know, your hands to pull your wrists over. Just easy side stretching. Should feel good above all else. Right. Inhale, reach back up after both side bends. And then melting into child's pose, hips towards heels, arms towards the top of your mat. An example here then again of taking your arms together, grabbing your elbows, and just resting on your forehead. At any point in time throughout this practice, pause this video and take child's pose to rest. We're going to move into that elbow dog here, and, and you know, I showed you the chair variation, so this is a great place to pull the chair in. But try to push your shoulders up over your elbows. You're pressing your shoulders towards the ceiling. I'm just slowly walking my feet forward and really tapping into the deep, deep muscles attached to the spine so I can really press taller in my spine even as I'm upside down. Pushing into your elbows, pushing into your wrists. All right, and then walk your feet back before you lower your knees down so it's not too crunched. Good. Resituate yourself on the mat. Downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. And take just another round of breath here to really oof, stretch it out. All right, step your left foot forward now. We'll get into that high lunge on the second side. Feel your balance before you do anything crazy with your arms. The back foot is very strong. Right leg is very strong. It's your back leg. And then your left knee is bent right over your ankle. You can reach your arms up. You could keep your hands at your hips. But lift your chest through your shoulders. And your gaze should help with balance. So wherever that is helpful, take it. Maybe goal post arms. Another nice modification for your arms here. Right. And then slowly lower your hands back down to the floor. I like to do little wrist circles. Sometimes my wrists get the better of me. And then this skandasan squat over to the other side. So this is the side that I have my right my right ankle sprain that I'm still recovering from. So my heel doesn't come to the floor here. Just as an example here of how you can modify this with you don't your heel does not need to be on the floor. So so let that let that lift. You just have to redistribute your balance and your weight. All right, back to the front of your mat for your low lunge. Lower your right knee down, bend your left knee over your ankle. Mudras in here if you want to take your hands behind and interlace your fingers. You could also just grab opposite elbows behind your back here. Once again, I love those side bends. So left hand to the left side of your mat, right hand to the right side of your mat, stretching the other arm overhead. Good. 
and then we'll set up for that half split. So you might have to wiggle your left foot forward, but as you do, pull that right hip or your left hip back and keep your right hip over your right knee, patting up that knee if it helps. Not about how low can you get to the floor here. In fact, I like to move my hands back so that I can stretch my chest through and then it puts more tension on that back fascial line and I get a, a better sensation here. Again, fingertip tabletop step your left knee back to meet your right inhale as you open exhale as you round maybe I like this because it looks and feels creepy but it's a little fun and really work into the deep deep muscles again to move your spine instead of just flopping your hips and your shoulders around to really articulate that spine inhale as you open exhale as you round and then sit back into this moment here in Virasana or Vajrasana just to ground catch your breath Check in. All right, taking your hands back out. I'm gonna take a, I guess like a modified child's pose on a hot toss and to move into down dog. So you can get into downward facing dog however you feel from tabletop if you'd like. Walk slowly back up to your hands now for your forward fold. Exhale once you get there and fold in. And then a nice big inhale, use your back muscles to reach up, or Vahastasan. Exhale, Samastitihi, standing pose. Good. Inhale, reach your arms back up. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. And inhale, prepare, half lift. Step back, plank pose, open your chest. Chaturanga as you bend your elbows. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog, look up. Exhale, look under. Tuck your toes and push back downward facing dog. Smooth breath when you move, right foot forward. And then your left heel down. Come up to stand, inhale, warrior two, open your arms, press your arms out. So the arms slightly higher than your shoulders helps to set the shoulder heads back down in your arms. Um, mine are a little high here. They probably could lower a little bit, but I just, I feel like this helps me from keeping my shoulders crunching up to my ears. Right, and then take your hands down here. We're going to move into this twist. Here's where you could use that chair. Right hand to your hip or your thigh left hand on the floor, and then stretch your right arm overhead if you like. Good. I'll lower down and just kind of whoop right into it. It just should feel really organic. Low lunge. Inhale, and then exhale. Hands to the floor. Plank pose. I'm going to move to side plank, Fasi Shtasan. You can take your left knee to the floor, but you're on your left hand, left foot. I'm a little wobbly. <laughs> Look up to your hand for extra challenge or look down to your left thumb or maybe even out to the side of the room. Slow this transition down when you move back over into plank. You're gonna get more work out of that than just holding side plank for an hour, you know? I mean, well, an hour would be a lot of work, but you know what I'm saying. Up dog, inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. And again, take this time to pause the video anytime, work out any kinks, okay? Especially if you need more resting time between between sides or between flows. Okay, left foot forward. Set your heel down, your right heel down. Warrior two, lift your head first and then open your arms. Try to avoid the cartwheeling motion. It's just, it's too much momentum and it's not as much controlled movement. Being here for just a few rounds of breath to feel shoulders over hips, ears away from shoulders, shoulders away from ears though. And then hands down, and again this twist. So drop that left sit bone, lift your right hip bone, and then twist from your upper back. Again, your left hand can go overhead, or you could put it on your hip. Right fingertips to the floor for a little height if you don't have a block handy. And then again, melt right down into that low lunge, lower your right knee softly, lift with your big, big inhale, and then lower back down to the floor with your hands so you can step right back plank pose, squeeze those legs together, roll to the right hand, right foot, left arm up to the ceiling. And try to avoid lifting your right hip too high so it's not a side bend. It's a really nice smooth side plank. Slow this transition here back over to plank, chaturanga as you exhale, 
Inhale, Upward Facing Dog, Cobra or Sphinx if you prefer, and exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Breath in, nose, breath out, nose. Smooth it down, you're breathing from your belly. Your belly should be pumping on both inhale and exhale. Okay, and then step forward, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. You can hug in here if it feels good. All the way up, inhale, Ordva Hastasana, Samastitihi, standing pose. All right, let's have some fun. Balancing, <laughs> it's always fun. So we're gonna move to Garudasana first, left knee bends, right leg wraps on top of your left. You can hook your toes if that doesn't hurt your knee. Right arm under your left arm, lift your elbows shoulder height and press your forearms away from your nose. Again, use the chair here, it's really helpful. Take your hands to your hips just to get your balance and then press up to stand as you uncross that right leg, unwrap it, and cross it over your thigh. Number four squat here, your right ankle is flexed, squatting into your left ankle. All right, and then press to stand, pull your right knee up nice and high, slow transition back to the back of your mat, warrior two, turn your back heel down, open your arms. Side angle right into it here. You could use a block behind your foot. Stretch your right arm overhead. Push your right foot back. Left knee and ankle are lined up. Nice, beautiful straight line there. Exhale, take it back down to the floor. And then step right back into a spinal balancing position here with your right hand and your left hand creating a circuit and lifting your foot up. Push into your left hand. Moment here just to balance. Right arm forward, left leg back. And then take your hands to the floor and just kind of let your hips slide, 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 slide back and your right foot moves over in front of your left hip until you're in pigeon, it's like magic. Slide that left hip towards your right heel and then push the floor away with your right shin as you lift and lengthen and in a back bend here. And again, you could use that chair to kneel on with your right knee. All right, we're gonna come out of it. So now you gotta take your arms forward and just kind of climb forward, back into tabletop pose. Move it around, wave out your spine, shake it out. Child's pose for just a moment, smooth breath. Good, and then come into your chaturanga. If you wanna move through plank, I kinda of did a little shoot through. I love doing that kind of stuff. So make it your practice, make it fun. Skip this uh, Chaturanga Vinyasa if you'd rather just take an extra moment in Child's Pose. And then also a moment in Down Dog before you step forward and move on to the second side. Okay, again, feel free to pause the video if you need a little more rest between the second side. Samastitihi. Okay, think about it and then do it. <laughs> All right, Gavardasan, eagle pose. Bend your right knee, cross your left leg, wrap your left leg around your right leg. Again, you can hook those toes or not. Left arm's gonna wrap under your right arm, lift your elbows, press your thumbs away from your face, really squat into that right ankle. Gazing at a spot right beyond those wrists is gonna be helpful. Not looking around is gonna be helpful. I know it's hard to do watching a video. All right. And then hands to hips to get your balance. And then we're gonna slide that ankle over like a typewriter slide, just right over into the number four squat. Sit those hips back, chest forward. I like prayer pose here. You can take any arm variation that you like. And then we're gonna press this up, standing, lift your left knee, get your balance on your right leg first, and then ease into transitioning warrior two. So it's a slow step back if you feel like you need to separate your feet a little farther before you move into side angle. And then your right hand down to the floor, left arm up overhead, keep that right sit bone pulling under your waist and pushing your right knee forward and then down into your right heel. All right, hands to the floor, left knee to the floor. Again, take this into that balancing uh, cross diagonal stretch. So your left hand comes back for your right foot. Right foot pushes your left hand up. Right hand strong on the floor. And then a moment to balance, Chakrabhakasan. Step your right, right leg back and then scooch back into it. 
like you're just melting into pigeon. I love that. Right hip then pushes into your left heel. Now your left shin is kicking the floor away. And lift your chest up. Lift your low back up off your waist. Lift your ribs up off your hips. Waist up off your hips. So there's a lift in your core. It's not a dumping. And then you're going to come back down to the floor. Just kind of walk your hands forward, and we're going to slide back up out of it. So pull your right knee forward right into tabletop. And then again, a moment in child's pose. Downward facing dog if you prefer. And then into maybe a little Anahatasana, a little Chaturanga, a little down dog transition. Anything that sounds good here, just play with it. That should be real organic and really instinctive to you. It should just feel good. Whatever you're doing, you're going to take a moment then when you finish that up in Downward Facing Dog just to catch your balance and your four points of contact on the floor, hands and feet. Right, three leg dog here. Lift your right leg up. Inhale. And then I'm going to really twist into this. I like to twist my shoulders into this. This is a really good modification for wild thing, but if you're okay with it, flip to the outside of your left foot and let your right toes come down. Push that left hip up. Push it up. And then your right arm stretches up overhead. Right heels off the floor. Good. And then coming back into it, again, slow, just like we did at a side plank. But now we're going to move into an arm balance. Put the back of your, or your inside of your right knee on the back of your right arm. You can stay in that plank with the knee on the arm, or you can arm balance. And then transition back into your three-leg dog, nice and slow. Again, pause the video to play with that. You are not expected to do it as fast <laughs> as I just did. So the knee's going to come through once you finish that arm balance. And we're going to move into revolved out of the knee pose, Janu Shirshasan, Parvrit Janu Shirshasan. So you don't have to take your right hand overhead to your left foot. That's kind of hard. You can actually take your right hand behind you and hook your left thigh with your right fingers. And just for a moment, fold out over the middle of this knee out and left leg out. So this wide angle that you're creating. All right, come back to the front of your mat. Uh huh. Press it back. Downward facing dog. Exhale. All right. You can take a few moments in downward facing dog or child's pose, or move through a chaturanga vinyasa. Inhale into up dog. Exhale into down dog. All right. So when you're ready. We'll do the left side, lift your left leg up as you inhale for three leg dog and stretch it out. So again, I like to move into the shoulders here, just twisting the shoulders open with the leg and that can suffice. That can be your wild thing. It's totally fine. Also, you can use that chair like I showed you earlier. Otherwise, roll to the outside of your right foot, land with your left toes on the floor with your left knee bent. So your left heel is approximately underneath your left sit bone somewhere around there. Left arm up and overhead. So again, it's a slow transition. When your left hand comes back to the floor, just pull your right knee or your left knee over to your left triceps and just stay there. You don't even have to take the arm balance. You can. Balancing your left leg forward, right leg back. Take time to play with it if you need to pause the video and work on that a few times. And then when you're done with it, come back up, stretch out three leg dog. And then knee through to your wrists. Set up for this revolved head of the knee pose, Parvrit Janu Shushasan. So I was just there for a moment, had my hand on the back of my head. So that's another modification. You don't have to reach overhead to your foot. Maybe just cup the back of your head with your hand, your left hand. And then your right arm can stretch over towards your left knee. Roll your left ribs open, right ribs under. And then come out of it so you can just stretch down through the middle line of that angle that you're creating. And slowly turning to the front of your mat and push the floor away and take your left leg back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good and slowly come into your Chaturanga if you're going to take that. Up dog and then downward facing dog. Lower your knees to the floor for a moment in child's pose. I'm going to 
I come to a toe squat here, I just like to squat on my toes to stretch out the feet, arches. It just feels good to me. You could also sit in Virasana again, just a moment to stretch. Or just to sit, you don't have to stretch, it doesn't always have to be a stretch, just be, you know, sometimes it's just a moment to just sit there and close your eyes and not do anything. Alright. So here I've got my hands behind my head, just taking a few stretches. Alright, and then we're going to set up for headstand. So kneeling in that position with your hands behind your head, elbows open, that could be a headstand prep, which is pretty much what I was getting ready for. Um, so now I'm going to take this back into dolphin head on the floor behind my hands, cup the head with your interlaced fingers and palms. Start with your knees in, like one knee into the chest at a time and lift that heel and then put it down, then the other knee into your chest and then lift your foot and then put it down. So again, you could pull the chair in for this and take your feet up to the ceiling only when you're ready. So maybe you're using a wall, you can walk your feet up a wall. Um, knees just stay under your chest for now. You don't even need to take your knees into your chest. But here's where I'm going to do my core, my little core work. So you can take straight legs down and up. Maybe it's knees bent down and up. Or again, use the chair seat with your like one foot on the chair seat and the other leg up and down, up and down, right? So toe taps on the floor. If you need to rewind and go back and check that portion out, you can. I'm also simply being in dolphin here without your head on the floor and lifting one leg up and then down is fine. And then take a moment in this inversion, whether you're here in headstand against the wall or with your feet on a chair, right? So your feet don't have to go up to the ceiling. Um, I wanted you to see there though, I took my legs back way too far and I got a little wobbly. So you need to feel out where your feet are, where you feel that balance point. And then you can see my belly is just blowing up and then coming back. And that's what you really wanna focus on here is breathing from that belly. So really press out through the belly. And it's not that you're pushing your belly, it's that your diaphragm is expanding, it's massive. If you're working a, 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 an elbow stand, an elbow dog, instead of, like it's a dolphin pose, if you're working that instead of headstand, feel free to take a child's pose and then come back up into the, to the dolphin pose, the elbow dog, just for a few moments. If you're in headstand, I would avoid going up and down too much. You know, if, if you've come out of your headstand at this point, just rest and, and wait to catch up, okay? Lower down slowly then when you've had enough of that, and then take child's pose for a few moments. Belly should still be pumping even in this pose, just as it was in downward facing dog, just as it was in headstand, just as it was in any of the warrior poses or standing poses or balancing poses. All right, and we'll come back up and come all the way down to the belly. I'm gonna take a shoulder stretch after that. Um, that feels really good after headstand for me. So left arm is out to the side in a, in a big T shape. And then I'm gonna use my right hand here just so that I don't over twist. I wanna keep my shoulders lined up here. I don't really wanna roll onto my back here. So the right foot is behind left leg as close to it as I can get it and right knee to the ceiling. Because I want this to be a shoulder stretch, not a massive twist. Right, and then the right arm comes straight out to the side. Right hand is slightly higher than your shoulder. Left foot to the floor behind the right leg. And again, try not to twist that right hip or, or the left hip open too much. The left shoulder just come back, comes back and stacks on top of the right shoulder. Let your head rest comfortably, whether you need to look down or up or maybe put a block or a pillow under your head. All right, and then as you're ready, you can come back out of this over to your belly. If you need a moment there on the belly, please feel free. Otherwise, cobra or upward facing dog, inhale. And then exhale, up and back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Just a moment or two here to stretch out, and then we're gonna come into seated position. So you can kneel down and cross your ankles and take your feet out in front of you. Just sit for a moment if you just need to acclimate to being in this position. You know, we, we did a seated forward fold already, but maybe it's just nice to take a moment to check in. Once you do, then cross your right ankle over your left thigh and then try to scoot your butt towards your left heel as much as you can. Use your hands behind you. Press your chest up towards your thigh so you can stay here. This is a great way to open the hip. You can also move this into a half bound lotus, half bound half lotus forward fold. 
You can pull your right heel up into your left hip crease. You could bind right hand around to your right foot. You don't have to bind. You could also use a strap or a, a tie or something that you've got. And then stretch out over your left leg. So I just like to kind of fold into it. I'm not really obsessed with stretching out towards my foot here. It just feels good to fold. Um, so forehead on my shin is just really calming to me. If that hurts, don't do it. If you have a block, put your forehead on a block. Good. And then just after about three to five breaths, inhale, come up. That foot's going to then come to the floor on the outside of your left leg, and you're going to hook with your left elbow to twist to your right. Keep pressing out through your left foot so your left leg is active. And then here is where you could use that chair if you need the chair for your ribs so that you don't bend and fold your upright instead opening. Release on your inhale, and then you can uncross your leg. And again, just take a moment to sit, move anything out that you need to, Dandasan, Staff Pose. When you're ready, set up that second side so your left ankle crosses over your right thigh this time. And you can move your butt in towards your right heel as much as you want. Hands can be on the floor. You can have your fingertips on the floor here again. You can have your hands flat on the floor. It just depends on your wrist flexibility. Also, feel free to stay here or straighten out your right leg and you can start to situate your left heel up into the right hip crease for half lotus. You could simply forward fold here with both hands or you can bind with your left hand coming around to your left foot. And then again, soften into it, just fold over it. And try to relax your left shoulder if you're binding so it's not pulling up. If you notice that you're tugging on your foot with your right hand, maybe just release it and let it rest on the floor. And again, put something under your forehead just to rest. And then again, about three to five breaths here. And when you're ready, inhale, lift up. And then you're gonna take that foot over to the floor outside of your right thigh this time. So your right foot is pressing out. Left knee is up to the ceiling left foot flat on the floor, hook or hug with your right arm and twist towards your left. Trying to lift your middle upper back to press your chest through your shoulders. And also trying not to let your shoulders round too much. Okay, uncross, come back to neutral here and then Shake it out. <laughs> Just gotta let things go sometimes. And then forward fold, exhale, Pachimottanasan. This is where you could use that chair if you wanna sit on the chair. Or take the chair over your, so your, your feet would go under the chair seat and then you could rest your forehead on the chair seat. If you've got bolsters or blocks or any props at home, pillows, a couch, anything you can use here to forward fold. up out of that with an inhale. I'm going to take a little twist here, so just windshield wiper those legs and twist to the left or the right and they come up and windshield wiper over to the other side and twist to your left or right, other side, whichever way you're going. Good, inhale, come back and lie down. I'm going to take knees to chest here just for a brief little hug. You can rock and roll. You can take happy baby, anything that feels good here. And I'm just going to move this into constructive rest for a few moments. Walk your feet away from your sit bones. And so if you feel like your knees are falling in together, maybe put something like a block or, or a pillow or something between your legs. And if you feel like your knees are falling away from each other, you can always use a yoga belt or again a tie um, to create some kind of a, you know, a tethering to keep your knees from falling out. And let your belly button drop down towards the spine, towards the floor, so you're not pushing your low back into the floor. You want to maintain the natural curvature of your low back. You want to feel a little bit of a relax, a let go in your inner groin, dropping your inner thighs down to your sit bones. And just breathing here, ujjayi breath. If you want a hand on your belly, you can. 
You can reach your arms above head. You can stay here for as long as you want, but when you're ready then to move into a restful position, start with easy movements like windshield wipers, knees to chest, one leg at a time, apanasan. And then just take a few moments to work out any extra stretches that feel good so that you can feel relaxed enough to rest for a brief moment here in Shavasana. And I'm going to leave this up to you so you can end this as you're ready. Stay here as long as you'd like. And just take a few moments to be here in your practice, in your body, on your mat, safe and sound. Thanks for practicing with me.